Today, we're gonna to use a really powerful percent and ratio math trick to answer a 700 level data sufficiency question really quickly and really easily. Also, just for showing up today, I have a free gift for you. Three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. These are the same strategies I teach all of my private students, so I know they work really well. They're gonna help you a lot and it's free. You can download it right in the description. Okay, let's jump into the example. Okay, quick strategy review. Whenever you're in a percent or ratio data sufficiency question, your job is to get all of the variables to cross off because if you can't get all the variables to cross off, we don't know exactly what the value of that ratio is it's insufficient. But if we can get all the variables to cross off, then we do know the exact value of that ratio or percent, so it is sufficient. For those of you who have already done example number two, example number one is gonna seem very familiar, but with everything on the GMAT, the devil is in the details, so read very carefully. Clyde buys and sells used records online. He recently purchased a mint condition Beatles album and a mint condition Marvin Gaye album. He sold both a week later. How much greater was his profit from selling the Beatles album than from selling the Marvin Gaye album? The first thing we always do is figure out what we've been asked and write it down. In this case, we need the profit that he made from the Beatles over the profit of Marvin Gaye. Now, profit has a very simple formula that the GMAT will expect you to know, which is revenue minus cost. So what you've really been asked is the Beatles revenue minus the Beatles cost over the Marvin Gaye revenue minus the Marvin Gaye cost, or to put that even more mathy, BR minus BC over MR minus MC. Next step, we take each statement take it out of English, put it into math, and then we substitute it into our ratio. If we can get all of the variables to cancel off, then that statement is sufficient. Let's take a look at statement number one, see what we have. Clyde paid 10% more for the Beatles album. What does that mean in math? BC equals 1.1 MC. Is that gonna be enough to get all of the variables to cancel out? No way. We don't have anything on revenue at all, only on cost. That's not, that's insufficient. So number two, Clyde sold the Beatles album for 20% more than the Marvin Gaye album. What does that mean in math? That means BR equals 1.2 MR. Is that going to be enough information to get all the variables to cancel off? No way, because number two gives us a bunch of revenue information, but we got nothing on cost. So let's combine and substitute and see if we can get all the variables to cancel off. So BR minus BC over MR minus MC, we can substitute in 1.2 MR minus 1.1 MC on the top, and the bottom stays MR minus MC. No. We, there is nothing we can do with that. We are not allowed to cross off the MR and the MCs from the top and the bottom. That is insufficient. That is answer choice E. Okay, so I know what some of you are thinking. Really, all I have to do is substitute in and see if all the variables cross off, that's it? Yeah, that's exactly right. Because remember in data sufficiency, you're not being asked to actually solve for the value. We don't care what the actual value is. We just care that we could calculate it. So I want you to use this strategy whenever you're solving for a percent ratio or fraction on a data sufficiency question. First, get everything out of English and into math. Sometimes that's the tricky part. Then plug in and then do your algebra. If all the variables cancel, then that statement is sufficient. Okay, great job. That's how it works. It's all about crossing off variables. If you found this video helpful, please hit like or subscribe. And don't forget about your free gift, Three Simple Strategies to Raise Your GMAT Score 30 Points Today. It's yours for free. You can download it right in the description. Okay, we'll see you next time.